I have to pay to print personal stuff at work? So do you, boss. Many years ago, I worked for an organization providing frontline customer service. It was a decent place to work, but our manager had lots of rules. One of the rules was that we could not do any personal printing with the printers at work. If we did, we were expected to pay 50 cents per page for black and white printing and $1 per page for color. I'm not sure who made this rule but the manager was constantly reminding us. Our desks were not assigned meaning, any day you could be sitting at any desk, depending on your assigned tasks for the day. One day, I was interviewing for another job within the organization, but at another location. Prior to the interview, the manager of the other location asked me if I'd mind printing a copy of my resume and bringing it with me, as their printers were down for the day. I said no problem and figured I'd print it at work since it was work-related. I was sitting at a desk that did not have a printer at it. The closest printer was located between my manager's desk and an employee desk, so I printed it and stood up to go get it. Before I go to the printer, my manager got there first. My print job went ahead of hers. When she saw what I had printed, she said, OP, this looks like a personal print job. I explained it wasn't, but she disagreed and said since it had nothing to do with our day-to-day -day work, I had to pay $2 for four black and white pages. I begrudgingly paid up, I asked her what happened to the money and she said she always put it in the Christmas party fund, alright. A few weeks later, I was sitting at the desk with the printer at it. It was lunchtime and everyone except my manager agreed to go to a nearby restaurant for lunch. I had walked out our building and realized I forgot my wallet, so I quickly ran back in to get it. When I got to my desk, I could hear the printer going. I was curious what was being printed as it was spitting out page after page. I quickly glanced at the pile and saw at least 100 pages printed in color, announcing a sweet 16 for Trista, our manager's daughter. It very obviously belonged to my manager. My manager came out of the bathroom a moment later and seemed shocked to see me standing there. I picked up the pile and passed it to her and told her our Christmas party fund was going to be getting a big boost. She said nothing, but looked really uncomfortable. A few weeks later, our district manager made his quarterly visit. He talked about the upcoming Christmas party and how excited he was for it. I decided it was time for some petty revenge. I raised my hand and said, just wondering how much we've accumulated this year for the Christmas party from print jobs? He looked so confused and asked me to explain what I meant, so I told him our manager's rule. He got really quiet and said he'd have to review this. The next day my manager sent an email saying the printing rule was something she was misinformed on and would be abolished immediately. Me, being the little spit disturber I am, hit reply all and asked what would happen to the already accumulated funds? Someone else said we should have a nice healthy fund for a pizza lunch and everyone agreed. The next day I hear my manager ordering 10 pizzas for lunch, also used her own personal credit card to pay for it all. Do I think she was pocketing the printing money all along? Absolutely, but it was fun making her sweat and then having to spend nearly $300 the next day to make up for it. Edit, $30 for a large pizza is very standard where I'm from. I ordered a pizza for supper last night and with tax, tip, and delivery, I paid $36. Our manager ordered us pizza from Boston Pizza, Canadian chain. Google them and you'll see their prices. Guy I know hit my car. So, someone I know hit my car while it was parked where he works. At first he was so apologetic and said he'd do anything to make it right. Then it came out that he's uninsured. With that knowledge, I tried my best to avoid a police report because he could easily get in legal trouble. I was trying my best to be nice. So the two options were either he pay the body shop in full, almost $3,000, or he pays the deductible for my insurance, repairs are made, then he works with the insurance to pay them back, even if this means garnishment. At least this would avoid suspension of his license or right to register. Anyway, I text him just expressing the importance of figuring this out because we have 30 days to file and it was already a week and a half since. My insurance agent also asked me to relay that the paying the deductible then paying them is best to avoid repercussions. So I did. Mind I've been nice this entire time. 
even though he totally trashed my car because he decided to whip out of a parking space way too fast and the wrong way without looking. I didn't even tell anyone else but my agent, mother, grandma, partner and boss since I had to go to my vehicle while working. He proceeds to text me, I've been driving longer than you've been born, I think I know this stuff. He's maybe 40, I'm 26. It's not like he's been driving for 50 plus years. <laughs> plus no matter how long you've driven doesn't make you knowledgeable or good at driving. <laughs> I respond that there is really no need for sarcasm and I was just relaying something I was specifically asked to by my agent. He continues with that I'm lecturing him. I told him it wasn't a lecture, just a message being relayed. If anything, it was my agent lecturing him for driving uninsured for 6 plus months. He continued on and on, even saying, I can do this all day, and every text you send I can respond, even when I had stopped and asked him to not ever contact me again. Since he wanted to play this game I decided to not only tell my insurance to go after him for whatever they can, I included everything where he admitted fault, so they can use in court when they go after him, and even filed a police report so we can obtain the video evidence of him hitting my car. So, yeah, now he's at risk for losing his license and right to register. Do I care? Nah. Don't drive without insurance. Also don't be rude to the person you hit who is trying to help you out even though you're completely at fault. Not the most petty I've been but it was fun. Block my driveway? I don't know where your car went. This just happened. In fact, I am still a little pumped of adrenaline off such a little act, what a rush. So I live on a street connected to an elementary school. Other residents including myself have issues on weekdays around 3.30 pm that parents will be parked all along our street to go pick up their kids from the school at the end of it. There is no problem with that, as I expect it. We have a guy named Terry on our street. Terry had left all the neighbors a business card saying that if any people block their driveway to call him immediately, and he would tow then right away. He is basically on standby from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. in our neighborhood. I never had a chance to use this card yet. The only issue for me is that I finish work at 2 p.m. and I go get groceries and usually end up home around 3.30 p.m. A few times now I have come home to park in my driveway and there is a vehicle completely blocking me. AKA, instead of parking on the curb, they will park at the end of my driveway and make it unable for me to park in. So I have to ask the owners to move. Today specifically, there was an old Dodge minivan block my driveway. When I got out of my car to knock on the tinted window, I realized no one was inside. I thought maybe they are napping in the back while they wait well. Nope. No one was in the vehicle. I couldn't get into my driveway. This is specifically annoying because the curb behind and in front of him were both vacant. Maybe they weren't vacant when he parked there. So I got the card out of my glove compartment and called Terry. I gave him my house number and in less than 5 minutes he had that bad boy towed out of there. So what happened next? I decided to start cleaning my car on my driveway until the owner came by. My first plan was to tell the owner that he or she had blocked the driveway and I had it towed. But as I was outside cleaning my car, it's 22 degree outside in November. Don't ask how Canadian weather works. I saw him coming back with his son. He looked incredibly confused as I was cleaning my car. I noticed him and didn't say anything as he was on his phone. So he actually came to me really upset. He said, hey, pal, have you seen my van? Are you that much of a FING a hole to call it for a tow when I was gone three minutes? So my plan changed. I said, wait, what van? And I decided to play dumb. Well, about an hour later, he rang my doorbell and asked for details. I told him to F off and came here to write this. Terry is back in his driveway with his tow truck though and I plan on giving him a six pack of beer for helping me. <laughs>